Hey everybody, welcome to a special interview that Jeff and I did here at Lease Your Pay Here Summit. Jeff, who we got? Yeah, so we interviewed Lee Wells yesterday. It was a great interview we did live here on stage. Before we get into that this week though, we want to remind you to subscribe to the newsletter. Newsletter, YouTube channel, and the podcast, Luke wherever you get it, right? Everywhere. He I wants you to subscribe to everything. Five star reviews, all those great, great things, yeah. right? Well, the, the great thing about Lee Wells, he was kind of a right hand man to a pretty big dude in our industry, right? Yeah, yeah, he was Don Foss's right hand man for a while, so he gets into that closer to the end of the episode. So stick around if you can, listen to the whole thing. He gives us some great insight on what it was like to be next to a a multi-millionaire, Billi billionaire, billionaire who founded CAC. Yeah. One of the most iconic lenders in our industry, right? It's a great episode, so here we go. You are listening to the Independent Dealer Podcast with hosts Luke Godwin and Jeff Watson. I'm Brett Buick with Buckeye Dealership Consulting. And uh, for those of you who aren't aware, we are a full service uh, reinsurance management company. Uh, we do uh, dealership consulting. Uh, we also have performance groups. And um, basically, we're, we, we kind of got our hands in a little bit of everything. Um, and we have a real commitment to one of the reasons why we're here is all about um, really trying to come here for the same reason you guys are, which is to uh, learn you know, more about this industry uh, and get better. Um, you know, we Obviously, we deal with a lot of independent dealers, buy here, pay here, and also retail. Uh, but there's some uniqueness uh, to the lease here, pay here. And so we're coming here to work with you and some of the clients that we already have in the room to find better ways to serve you um, with you know, things that make your business different than anybody else's. Some of the pending things that are going to be happening to you guys over the years, the next couple of years, as your tax strategies are going to be changing and your bonus depreciation start to disappear. And so one of the things that we're working on is when we're creating a reinsurance company for you is just like you are in your business, is how can we plan not just for what's the tax strategy today, but what's it gonna be in, in 25? And how can we get ready for 2000 or 2025 today, right? So it's make sure that we create a program that's gonna be different based on your dealership, what your long-term goals are, um, even the people that we have in the room right now, they do things differently. So the stores are not created equal. So it's a, it's a long conversation about what you're trying to accomplish, where you want to be, where do you think your business is going to be in 2025, and how can we help you not only get there, but be prepared once it's there and not have to be reactive. So we're here, um, and we, we, we're heavy on the, you know, the national circuit at the state level and supporting people like LHPH Capital so that we can not just be a vendor but be a better partner for you in your business. Um, that's something we take real seriously. So we appreciate you having us out, the conversations. Um, we appreciate uh, LHPH having us out so that we can learn more about your businesses. And I look forward to uh, having more conversations with anyone who's interested in what we might be able to do together to uh, make those preparations. So thanks again. All right. Let's do it. You good? I'm good. You guys good? Hello and welcome to this very special edition of the Independent Dealer Podcast, brought to you live. Live. From San Diego. Here, pay here, Summit, San Diego 2022, in front of a live studio audience. Woo! They all look friendly enough. I think we're safe. Hey, we got an applause. Have we ever got an applause before? I know. No? Okay. Well, we actually have a special treat with y'all today. It's uh, Lee Wells from Carwright. Tell us about your experience uh, in the auto industry, because a lot of people out there probably don't know. Well, I guess that uh, I should um, start with, um, I have uh, 25 years of experience in subprime lending. Um, it was part of the original uh, executive launch team of Carwright in 2010. Um, helped build the company to uh, its current state today of um, 25 rooftops in uh, 12 states and um, originated um, 20,000 leases over a um, 10 year period. Wow. Uh, and I believe that we were the very first uh, uh, client of LHPH back in 2010. Is that true, Tim? Yes. Okay, so awesome. anyways, I got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, I mean, that's a long time. And that's a, a 20,000 leases originated? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's rivaling some, you know, National brands, maybe. Probably. I don't know. Not, well, I don't know. Ford and GM probably do better than us. But. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's got to be some smaller, some smaller brands probably haven't, haven't done that many. That's true. But I, they're, they're, you know, I, I think that we did a good job. Um, it's definitely a big enough um, pool to, to be able to talk about you know, the, the stats on it and 
give any you know feedback or information on performance and whatnot, what to do, what not to do. Well, what would you say are the key factors for success in leasing? Because at twenty thousand, you probably know them. So we, we did an analysis uh, over the last year, and it really boiled down to the two most important things were were down payment and term. So the more money you got down and the shorter the term, the better the deal. Now, there was, anecdotally, there is a, a third one, kind of a, a sidebar, is that you know any car that has um, uh, a strong residual value um, either high and uh, sh has shown in the past to be you know very stable also by asset will perform better than than other things like a Honda CRV money in the bank everyone so I found out earlier today that uh, Jeff's favorite type of car is one that will last the, the term of the loan that's the only car I don't care about Ferraris <laughs> Lambos that's not my thing you ask that's my, my favorite that's, car that's it's, my thing it's a car that'll last the term of the loan do you what were those cars? So our, our you know, sweet spot was uh, bread and butter cars, but we were, um, um, you know, all of our stuff was, was originated before uh, pre-pandemic, so that you have to take that with a grain of salt because the world is different today. Um, but they were all, um, on average, probably between 40 and 45,000 uh, miles, some of them as low as, um, uh, you know, less than 10,000, you know, the the uh, the bread and butter cars there was you know thirty percent of the portfolio were seven models, um, which is you know top was the Chrysler two hundred, the uh, Malibu, a Focus. Uh, let's see, uh, let's see who was a Chevy. I don't know. Anyway, then Dodge Caravan, um, Nissan Altima, and I missed one in the middle there. But anyways, <laughs> you get that. I mean, the same thing you guys were talking about earlier. Well, you know what's funny is you said. One of the main you know, factors were down payment and term. I've sat in so many 20 group classes and, and meetings, and, every, and, and this one person in particular would argue me up and down that down payment didn't matter. Why did it matter? Why, why did you see that that matter? Or was it the combination of down payment and term? Well, I guess we, that we learned that because that we thought the same thing. Okay, we're going to come out with a 500 down program. This is going to be great. Yeah, it's <laughs> a lot of cars. The, once when you go through the stats on it, it, it just doesn't come out that way. I mean, that, that's, that's the old skin in the game. You know, the, the, the more skin in the game, the more, uh, you know, um, probability that they're going to fight to keep the car, you know, in their possession and their payments at least reasonably current so that you're not going to repo the car. It's just kind of simple math. Hmm. I, I've always thought it was. How about you, Jeff? Yeah, I, I thought I was, I'm really interested in, when you say a predictable residual value, a Ford Focus and a Chrysler 200 and a, and a Dodge Caravan, as much as I love <laughs> me a Dodge Caravan, I got a lot full of them right now, no one else loves them, but I love them, uh, they don't strike me as a stable residual. So I, that, I said those were the, 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 that was the, the, those were the seven cars that made up 30% of portfolio. That was a separate conversation from the ah. <laughs> performance. The performance had to okay, do okay. With, with the money down, um, you know, and the term of the loan, and then anecdotally, you know, the high residual, you know, um, you know cars and, and, and stable residual cars. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you love Kia Souls for some reason. I love Kia Souls. I don't. Uh, there's nobody, yeah. I, I, I'm not the only one. No, Anybody, I, somebody. You know, I think I, I like them too. I, they, it's funny because it's almost like the uh, kind of a cult following, like kind of like Subaru, you know, um, uh, owners. You know, they, there there is a following for them, or Wranglers. You know, it's the same thing. <laughs> but Wranglers will, will. I mean, people. I see why people want a Wrangler. All right, let's see in here. Really? Let's let's see in here real quick. Let's let's see. We, we'll, we'll do a little contest here. Who in here likes Kia Souls? Let's hear some noise. Yay! Bye, right, guys. Yeah. Okay. They, they okay. might as well say Honda across the front of them. Okay. No, 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 no. Because no. they are, no, 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 no. they're not a Kia. They're a and I'm going to say this, and you guys are all going to start buying them, and I'm not going to be able to okay. anymore. So, so, so we had that so conversation. For those, for those who don't like it, let's hear a big boo. Boo. I don't know. It's pretty even, I think, Jeff. Okay. Okay. Anyway, next. You, um, you're going to convince Luke here and, and me, a couple of buy here, pay here guys, why we should convert over to a lease here, pay here and those that are listening at home, you have an opportunity or a unique opportunity. If you were to start up, you're very well connected because of your situation with CAC, right? So you see what a traditional finance model is like. When you guys started this, you started as leasing, right? And if you, did it, if you ramped this up again, you would 
do leasing? Yes, absolutely, 100%. And you know, it's not rocket science, and everybody has talked about it, but there's seven or eight things that are just great about um, you know, leasing. I mean, you get, you know, you're going to get at least six to eight percent more money into the into the car instead of going to the state. You know, in a lot of states, like in Michigan, where we have six um, um, locations, um, you never get that back. If you repo a car in, in two weeks, you lose that six percent. So, and then, you know, you have the you have the the term, the depreciation, the bankruptcy protection. The, I mean, it can go on. You guys, they're all the same uh, things that, that are. You know, you have, a, um, and th this is a really big one too, particularly for for those that are going, are thinking about scaling, and getting big, is that there's the there, it's a little bit more of a level playing field on the regulatory side. You know, between you and the government. I mean, that may change, but it's it's a lot better than reg. You know, reg Z is a lot a lot more favorable for for you to, to you know defend your practices. Uh, as opposed to uh, Reg Z, which is way left, left, you know, consumer protection side. How much should that decision to go into lease here, pay here, and the tax advantage that it gives you enter into that conversation? Is it is it is it a big enough deal to sway you from from other models? So I wouldn't do it for that one, uh, just for the the tax effect. Although I did talk to somebody earlier today, that that, that was the number one for them. They're saying I, I'm saving thirty or forty grand a year. So, um, but I, I wouldn't. I, I, you know, I think it's the combination of the seven or eight attributes. Uh, you know, that 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 leasing provides. The, you know, one of the things that nobody really talked about a, a lot about I mean, you're forcing the customer to come back to you whether they like it or not. You still do a retail installment contract. You, you know, and you give them the best service in the world. Um, you know, it's 50-50, they're going to come back. I mean, particularly because I know CAC's um, average term last time I looked at it was 70-plus was months. I mean, who wants to have a cycle every 70 months? I'd rather be at, at one every 35 months. And speaking of uh, term, because you, you brought that up earlier, what was your best term to, that made the best lease? It was between 30 and 36. Okay. Yeah, but we, we had a significant uh, portion during the period of time. Now, it, when we started in 2010, there was not a lot of competition, and we, we just we didn't have to uh, do anything except 36 or less, down to down to 24. And uh, but then as the credit markets started to get a little bit looser and competition got higher, and there was there was payment competition um, that you know we were actually forced to move to 48. Um, I, I, you know, I, if I had to uh, relive that, I would, I would not do that. I would, it would, be, it's better to to um, sacrifice the production level for uh, a quality portfolio as opposed to create a bunch of extra work. Because I mean, let's face it, repoing or chasing, and then repoing and then fixing the car, and it just, I mean, there's, it's a, there's a lot of energy that is expended in in that process, and it's better just not to go down that way. Particularly if you have a, a, a wide enough uh, spectrum of, of of lenders, which we do, we're a full spectrum. We're not selling credit; we're selling cars. You know, we, we have lenders all the way from A plus all the way down. We take all the, the you know the deep subprime ourselves, and um, you know you can you can you know fill in the, the production levels you know with these other opportunities at the, with the other with the other lenders and lay off that. Um, uh, risk somewhere else as opposed to putting that risk in your portfolio. Hey, just to break in real fast and thank our sponsors, Buckeye Dealership Consulting. They were out here, Jeff. They are always taking care of the independent dealer, whether you're a retail, whether you're a buy here, pay here, or lease here, pay here, which we're talking about today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, reinsurance products that Buckeye sells you are good for everything. Everything, no matter what industry you're in, when it comes to cars, they're there for you. Check them out, do the things you need to do to get involved. Speaking of risk, when you say that, as a, as a lease here, pay here, are you less likely or do you have less uh, landmines to step on from like a CFPB standpoint in, in your kind of regulation, like you were talking about Reg Z and things like that? Is leasing, maybe it, you're steering clear of, of a few more things than you would in traditional? You are kind of, although there is a, the, it, you are in the, on the, the lease contract side, okay? But the, but the, in the in the middle of the collection side, you still have that same, mm. you know, you still have those. You still have to be real careful in that part of the business. But in the contract side, you have a lot more leeway. That's 
Yeah, I, I can see that whole whole game there, not game, but the, the situation. It's the term also. Does the term when you're at 35 months or, or, or 36 months, does that also allow you to to need less inventory if you can if you can put that car back out sooner? Um, does it give you a, a bottom end end car where where we in the retail business like I'm in retail buy here pay here it's I'm always get, having to get new cars, but if you get that lease back at 35 months, is it able to go again? How many times can you do so, it? So the answer to that uh, is yes, particularly for us where we were you know, st rolling cars at an average of 40,000 on the first go around, you know, we could easily cycle them two or three times. Although this was an ongoing uh, you know, conflict between myself and my boss. Uh, you know, I, I was, my early training was a CPA. I'm like, well, I already own the asset. I've already probably, I, I know the asset also. We've had, we've had, you know, we have history here. We know if it's a lemon or not a lemon. This should go, if it's, if it's still brand worthy, meaning it's not, it can't be 180,000 miles. You know, we're not going to run the wheels off a car, but, uh, you know, if it's less than 100,000 miles, I mean, take the easy win, put it back on the front line. So, yes. I like that. You talk about brand when it comes to that. I mean, it's brand worthy. That's a, that's a, I mean, that's a, Interesting statement. Yeah, so one of the things that, that um, you know, uh, leasing provides, you know, it's on my list of seven or eight things, is it does the same thing uh, in a used car as it does for a used, uh, a used car as it does for a new car, is that, you know, the, 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 the lessee is going to get a, a better car for the same amount of money, generally. And the same thing in, in leasing, uh, in new cars. Um, and so I think that that, that in itself, um, you know, what we wanted to do is um, take that one step further and move it down, for, you know, to even low mileage um, um, used cars. Uh, because let's face it, you know, the the the, the, the less mileage on a car, the more likely it's going to stay on the road, and that equals payment performance. I mean, it's it's, it's kind of a simple formula. So so brand worthy was we we wanted to have it a better experience. Less headaches. Who wants to have their phone ring off the hook on Monday morning with you know a hundred people with cars that aren't, aren't working and yeah, that's you know. brain damage. Yeah, yeah. One of the biggest hurdles I have is, um, and you you see this if you twenty thousand loans was it hard to get the the purchaser to have ownership over that car and take care of it? I mean I know how I drive rentals, <laughs> so I can only imagine the way my customers. I know how they drive my loaner cars too, so. Was that a problem? It, well, I guess that that I, I I I'm not necessarily saying I'm coined this, but the the they that if someone has a subprime credit score, they're going to treat their car just like they treat their credit score, like a garbage can. <laughs> I mean, it just they they run them hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, that that's my correlation. So, so you didn't have the opinion of? I guess I'm thinking. Man, I got I got six more months. This car's got to make it six months, and then I turn it back in. I'm going to just drive this thing till the wheels fall off. There's no way I'm doing X, Y, or Z if something goes wrong to this thing. So and, I think that's and then the same, they create more problems, right? I think that's the same thing. You can infer that. For Across what, all boards. The, yeah, the, my, my comment that's covers that. I mean, my, just, my guys don't put tires on anything either. So. Right. Or brakes. Or, or brakes. You know, or even <laughs> vacuum it out or throw out the garbage, you know, the fast food wrappers. And, you know, it's, it's was there anything else that surprised you from seeing those? Is there anything that you're like, wow, I did not think this was going to go that way? Just what you just said that, I mean, that particularly on the repos, not the turn-ins, but the repos, every single one it was amazing. That you, it, you'd have to wear rubber boots and gloves to drive these cars. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just, how, how, why do you want to do this? I mean, it can't be enjoyable. I mean, out of, out of all, I, I get it. it. I, a, you know, when I was, when I was, every, when I was young, I would spend you know, uh, um, Sunday afternoon you know, clean my car, like everything, inside out, wax, vacuum, you know, armor all, just the whole thing. Yeah. That never happened on and no, no, no. prime <laughs> customers, no. And you said rubber boots and gloves, and every dealer in here went back in their mind to that one repo that they got back in the day when they were oh. the ones that had to get in the car with the rubber boots and gloves and drive it to the back and, and clean it out. It's, exactly. It, yeah. you know, we, we, we find the same thing in every repo, uh, lottery tickets and cigarettes. <laughs> and they're all over the car, right? <laughs> But it, it goes with, with the territory, I think. Uh, out of all those 20,000, there's got to be one thing that I, I think you would want everybody in here to take away. What, what, what would it be if you just said, hey, if you can do this one thing to your portfolio, it will, it will change it. 
It's, it actually, it's what I already said: is don't write the bad deals. Don't stretch for volume. Stick mm -hmm. to your stick to your you know what you know works, and you know you know let try to fill, if you need more volume, try to fill it in somewhere else because you know, all you're going to do is you create headaches. You're we are not going to win. We are all so guilty of doing that. How do you? But well, I did it. We did it. So yeah, how do you, I mean, <laughs> what's a, what's something good that we can say? Every time we start to feel like we need more volume, is it to breathe? I mean, what, I mean, what is it? I mean, you know, what do you do? Think again. I defer the, the question until tomorrow. Go be, <laughs> ask yourself again. Go put yeah. the rubber gloves on and get yeah. in that repo. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That'll bring you back make to a few, Make a few what, collection calls. Yeah. Is sure. it easier to fire a customer with a leasing model? Like, because that's what we talk about, the headaches, right? Maybe I stretched too far and I got into this guy, he's a headache, and 30 or 60 days into the loan, I realized this customer's a real headache. And I'd rather just, sorry, Mr. Customer, how's your down payment back? Give me my car. Is, is that easier with a lease than it is a traditional? Why would you do that? Why don't you just repo them? <laughs> well, I mean, because essentially cause, that's it. Yeah. I, I would like to fire you as a customer. Is it easier with a lease? I, I don't, it, it is easier because that, that um, um, you know, you have the, the disclosure laws and, and the, um, you know, and the timing stuff that you need to do in terms of pre, you know, notice and all that stuff you don't have to do. So it is easier, mm -hmm. but, you know, but in terms of, you, know, you made it like seem like a personal experience. It's not a personal experience. It's, you know, it's either they're paying or they're not paying. And if they're not paying, you repo them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's that simple. I take it personal. Yeah, I know, exactly. So like, you never these should. Are, these are all your best friends. <laughs> yeah, we all know we have those. Every so often you have those headache customers where you're like, all right, Mr. Customer, I'm never going to make you happy. It's best we part ways instead of continuing this 36-month relationship. You know, bring the car back. You know, no harm, no foul. It seems like leasing just that much easier. A lease termination on my side. There should be some sort of a lease termination on the deal. I don't know whether there is that. Get it out of there. Mm -hmm. right. Hey, everybody. Sorry, one more break into the episode. Uh, Pastime GPS. Great sponsor of the podcast and a great GPS unit. And a great helper of the industry and supporter of the industry helps uh, dealers do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Always involved. Uh, they're here at least here, pay here, because if you're leasing the car, you're going to need uh, Pastime GPS device as well. So if you need a good GPS, no matter if you retail, buy here, pay here, or lease here, pay here, these are the guys to go with. Yeah, and remember to use our code that you can find in the show notes to get one free unit when you order five. Um, last question we have for you, and this is one I'm, I'm super interested in. You had a really close relationship uh, with your mentor, I yes. would say. What, what would you call him? Well, I, I guess I'd like to, uh, sad to say, I, I talked to uh, a, a bunch of people, but my, uh, my friend, uh, my mentor for the last 14 years, um, and you know, industry icon and founder of CarRight and credit acceptance, Don Foss, passed away about a month ago. Every, most people probably knew that, but I actually did talk to some people that didn't, so I just wanted to let people know that. So it's been a sad month. But anyways, but don't, don't be sad. <laughs> he, he was a great man. Uh, he, he touched you know, the credit acceptance um, motto where you know we change lives you know he he personally touched you know many people and i know that there are are, are many in this room that that knew him and and had uh, relationships with him too um he he i i had to share a couple stories with you that um when early on in my uh, uh, uh after we had launched car right you know he was still the acting chairman at, at credit acceptance and i had a i had a meeting with him um, at his office, and it was pretty. It was pretty grand. It was a suite, basically. It was a, a normal office's. Uh, it would be the whole company, <laughs> and so I go into his office, and um, I sit down at his desk, and and uh, that you know most people when they have these big grand desks, and whatnot, they have the, this big gold plaque with their name and their title on it, and whatnot, and on the on on his desk he had this wood a plaque that was very simple and it said, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And I, it, it sounds simple, but, but it really is kind of, for those of you who did know Don, it really, it really kind of uh, epitomized him because that, you know, that includes you know, having your, your priorities and taking care of them, communicating properly to, to your team or your customers, making the calls that you need to call and doing the follow-up you need to do. And the, and the other thing too that Don was really great at, he was a, uh, he was super creative, and he was always thinking about uh, what he could uh, do to 
improve the business or do something different or do something just uh, you know completely different like you know we're, we're now in the car wash business and that was all you know Don Foss wanted to do that um, you know he he uh, was I think that the other thing is that it's that for somebody that was so um, successful he was he was you know really down to earth and uh, um, very personable and uh, he, he had a saying too that, that, uh, that I love that um, you know, he would always give somebody a second chance, meaning his customers. And, uh, I, and I, I really liked that. You know, the, uh, and I guess the, fi the final two things that, that, that I'd like to add on that is that, that you know, he, he had a, a lot of compassion um, and, you know, and he loved to uh, uh, you know, bet on the underdog and give the underdog, uh, you know, a chance. I mean, he did that. He touched a lot of people in that way. And 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 the last thing, which 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 was really the greatest thing that I'll miss, is that there wasn't a day that 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 I that I either talked to him on the phone, or that we we were had a meeting or we went on a business trip uh, looking for properties or whatnot. And um, that I didn't feel uplifted, you know, by his, you know, his presence, you know, despite, uh, you know, his, he was always, uh, he made it fun. And I guess I, that, that's one thing I can, uh, you as leaders can share. You could be, he was, he was, he was very tough boss. He was very, he had a lot of expectations and that's part of the reason he was so successful. But I can tell you this, if you make it fun, your people will stretch for you. They'll do it. Yeah, would you mind sharing the, the story you told Jeff and I about how Carwright came to being? Oh, yeah, that's a good story. So I, I, in 2009, I was in, introduced to Don, and I had, um, uh, had come up with, at that point in time, a, a business plan um, to uh, you know, capitalize on the, the debt markets that were collapsing and buy a lot, all this performing debt that was being sold at pennies on the dollar. So I made this all a complicated, you know, business plan and put together, and got a meeting with him, and I, um, you know, I, he was, uh, he even bought me lunch, and I did this 45-minute pitch to him, and then um, at the end of that um, uh, pitch, he said to me, he said, "What do you think about the car business, Lee?" I said, "Well, you know, I guess that, uh, you know, when I was uh, um, a CPA, I, you know, I." It being in Detroit, I had uh, automotive customers and whatnot, and I've bought a lot of cars in my life, but I've really never been really in the retail automotive business. He said, and he gave me the pitch on car right, and he said, you know, I'm looking to hire an executive to, to launch this business plan. And then, you know, two weeks later, on September 1st, 2010, bada bing, we were, we were uh, you know, we had, uh, it was basically just me, and we had two dealers that were delivering leases that, that, that month. We did 30 the first month, um, and then that, that was, that's history, and here we are today. It's, you know, I read this book, A Who Not How. Jeff told me about this a while back, but it just reminded me of that. Is, and you said this, even that he would get something in his mind, and he would find a who to make it happen. Yep. And, and you were the who, and that's just such a, a neat story. Yeah, it was, it was, it was uh, um, unique in general. I mean, the, the, just kind of the coincidence of us meeting and our, our talents and enthusiasm for what we were doing to overlap. I mean, it was, it was, it was a pleasure to work for him. So interesting to, ever, ever. To, to be excited and enthusiastic and, and, and happy about what you do. Right. Attract people who are also enthusiastic and, and you know, True. driven around and you and, and you create yeah. great things, yeah. you know. Um, what a great example. Are we going to take any questions? Or, Tim, do you want, should we take questions? Or? What, what questions do you have for, for Lee? Got well, we're catching questions. everybody off, off I'll tell guard you, yeah. for a second. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'll, look, I'll kick it off for you. So All right. Maybe uh, kind of cool because George is here also, one of the or, original LHPH guys, um, what was it like strategizing with George and Terry when you guys were building the program? So actually, it's, it's pretty interesting. The, the, the LHPH, was, was, um, their, their a product offering was different uh, back then, and, and we provided all our own capital, and the LHPH provided all of the least technology 
um, both in terms of contracts, but also in terms of processes, legal knowledge, and whatnot. And I actually, it was great because I, I always um, um, uh, viewed that the LHPH, both you know George and Terry, um, were you know part of my executive team. They just, I mean, they were not, they, they weren't directly on payroll, but I mean, we had weekly meetings and they, I mean, the amount of, of, of uh, knowledge that this organization has is unbelievable in the, in the leasing business. And it really, really, I think w it was a huge part of our success. Absolutely. Did, did Don have any, I mean, he had never been in the leasing business before, right? No, and it's, it's interesting that part of the reason that, that he launched, um, um, you know, Carwright was that he, um, that actually CAC um, got into the leasing business right before the credit crunch. And at, at the point in time they had the credit crunch, they did an analysis, um, you know, the bean counters are in there, and they, they figured out that they were making X return on their retail installment contracts and they were making less return on the leases. I think they probably weren't doing the calculations right or they didn't have a big enough sample size to have meaningful information. Um, and so they, they had to make a choice where they can put the capital. They got rid of the leasing business. So then, you know, come back a few years later, Don went back there to, hey, listen, this is my idea, not interested. He said, all right, well, I'm going to launch Kare. So. Super interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? This side of the room. So you said you, the down payment and uh, a shorter term you liked. So a shorter term did you think was going to be a higher? Good question. So we, we made the choice. I didn't. It, it, I think that a, one person can maybe balance the, the uh, walk on the, um, the tightrope and do both leasing and a retail installment contract. I think an organization you're asking for trouble, and we kept to our guns all along. We we did we never did one in-house retail installment contract ever during this period of time, Car, or Carwright never did. And what we did instead was that if they couldn't. Um, uh, we would help them to try and, you know, we've, because we're a full spectrum lender, we, we would try and get them to, to, you know, place their their new loan somewhere else, either with the credit union or with what, what, what other lenders, or, uh, um, and this was um, thanks to to LHPH that you can um, extend the lease for six months, and so if someone's residual was you know, 4,200 bucks, and our, our average, I didn't, I forgot to mention this, our average ACV was 13,000, so, it, you know, having the, the, I don't remember what the average residual is, but 4,200 sounds about right, so then if their payment was 420 bucks, it would amortize down, you know, at two, at the end of the, uh, of the extension, you can't extend it more than six months, now their buyout is $1,600, they could get the cash, that's how we did it. And it became easy, too. I mean, if you do it with the retail installment contract, it becomes messy. You have to have a closing. The title has to transfer. You have to get different, I mean, it's just, the accounting's different. It's just, the extension is the way to go. What's your strategy, though, to get them in another car and then just? So, so, so yeah, the answer would be we, we would take the trade all the time. As a matter of fact, we had one of the, uh, the going back to one of Don's, you know, um, all his you know, ideas that he brought to the table is that we had an, 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 um, an exchange policy that if you wanted to, if you, if after 12 months, if you made all your payments on time, you, for 450 bucks, you could exchange into another car. So we, we were doing all sorts of, we, yeah, we were putting people in cars all the time. And, and a car that's only been out for 12 months was lot ready, basically, with a vacuum and a wash. So. Now, I do have to, I want to make a, a caveat on that, is that it's hard to make money on a lease that's only out on 12 months. So you were giving, good, you were giving the customer something that was very valuable, but as it turns out, looking back after you do run the, you know, the, the, through the metrics, is that, that I don't think that I, I, I would recommend that. It was, good, it was a good idea. I mean, it was great marketing, and people did, it, it actually did get, a, um, uh, us to get more consumers to, um, uh, you know, to adopt or to, uh, to like the, the lease concept um, as opposed to buying. Because a lot of the, a lot of the um, initially, a lot of the subprime people, no, I just want to buy the car. 
I don't want to lease. I want to buy the car. You know, because that's that's the, that was their choice back then. Initially, they were trained to do that. But, anyways, any more? Good yeah. question. Yeah. So twelve years in, thousands and thousands of leases. You have multiple locations, multiple states. From a leadership perspective, what keeps driving you and your team? So I think that part of that is you know um, you know Don's vision. You know he he originally wanted to get to you know two hundred rooftops. And you know he wanted us as a team to take the, the company public, and um, you know it, we're you know we're only 30 days into it, and the you know we're trying to figure out the the the, the new direction. I mean it was easy it was easy up to a, a month ago. I reported Don if I wanted to do something that was high level, I just call him up and okay do it. And now the the, the process of going through the estate is different, and we're, we're I'd say right now we're kind of in, in a holding pattern. Um, but we're, you know, the, we're, you know, our, our initial marching orders is it's business as usual. So that's, you know, it's the best I can give you today because I don't know any more than that. Anybody else? Well, Lee, thank you for thank being you. with us. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Dealers Helping Dealers. Please leave us a review and subscribe. The Independent Dealer Podcast.